What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Sideline Showdown. As always, it's your boy, Mike Still. Joined, as always, most of the time, minus ones, by my boy, Keto. How's it going, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you, man? I'm doing great, as always, man. Yes, Very exciting. We're right here again at Transcona Nationals Field for the second edition of ID Cap yep. uh, for Selects. Yep. Uh, the first one occurred a couple of weeks ago. Let's yeah. just talk about the first I, uh, Selects ID Camp and what you saw from the guys. You know what? The first ID Camp, we had about 70, 80 kids out here here and you know uh, we had a great time to chance to evaluate the kids they had a lot of fun and you know now that the season's winding up for the MMFA a lot more kids are coming out so like as you see today we probably have around over 100 kids out here and um, you know just out here getting better evaluating getting ready to and prepared to go to Minneapolis in, in three in two weeks no, sorry, three weeks. So, um, you know, everybody's just uh, excited to get going, man. Awesome. So let's basically just talk uh, about the ID camp process for yeah. sure, because this is, again, the second one. Yeah. So we see some people, may, maybe they've been here before, some yeah. uh, that have not. So for those that are unfamiliar, again, maybe just describe what the ID camp yeah. is and what the purpose of it is in the long run of everything. Yeah, so the long run of the whole entire program and the right. whole entire ID camp is to basically get kids who haven't been um, involved with the, the program or even have been involved with the program to get the opportunity to one meet the coaches also be able to show their skill sets and for us to be able to identify um, how they can best add into what we're trying to do going down to the states because you know it's 11 man shorter field I mean uh, smaller field so it's gonna ask for you know at the end of the day we have a lot of great players out here that we know we can go out there and compete so we're just trying to find the right guys to be able to make a strong core so that we can go out there and win and show what we the Canadians can do Absolutely. Well, Keto, it's going to be exciting to follow through this whole process. And uh, for those unfamiliar, again, with what the Sideline Showdown's representation is going to be for the selects, the primary purpose, again, is basically to identify and analyze a lot of the athletes that are yes. here, profile them on the show right. so that, you know, there's a little bit more awareness about these players, get exactly. to know their backgrounds a little yep. bit more. Right. And, yeah, just their talent levels. It's sort of um, on top of them being able to perform in Texas. It's also exposure for them on the other side of things, the media side and yes. that. So that's a lot of what we'll be doing for the next, you know, after this season is over for WHS yeah. going forward is we'll be looking at a lot of sucks guys and, right. and how they perform and we'll also be going all the way through around and doing a lot of other stuff yeah. but that's just one of the things yeah, we're yeah, doing yeah. for sure um, this week keto very busy week for both of us yeah. we were at a number of WHSFL games and yeah. honestly keto first and foremost I got to start off with the Rising Stars Foundation yeah, game a yeah. uh, yeah. number of very influential people yeah. involved with the Rising Stars Foundation Eric Vincent John yeah. Kiesman yeah. just a couple names those are WHSFL yeah. coaches uh, and the Rising Stars Stars Foundation itself is just a tremendous program that they've created down yeah. there. Uh, it details uh, basically sort of um, scholarships and uh, opportunities maybe for youth, disadvantaged youth, mm -hmm. uh, areas of the community where, you know, maybe mentorship is a little bit more lacking yeah. or the opportunities um, to succeed in certain areas in school yeah. or, or stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, just a great program. There are a number of great programs in our city, obviously. Playing for a Purpose is an absolutely tremendous program as well. And yeah. there are a, a number of others. Yeah. Uh, but what they do is great with Rising Stars. Yeah. Uh, and you had the opportunity to give both St. John's and Elmwood new jerseys yeah. for their game yeah. this past Saturday. Yeah. It was unbelievable. It was really crazy. It was, you know what, it was really cool because you know what, this, it all started off with John Keesman coming in August saying like, hey look, we want to run a game and uh, we want to make it really special for the kids. So a lot of what we did with this game is a lot of things that we've done with the selects already with the jersey drive. I mean a t-shirt drive leading into buying jerseys and getting them sponsored. And so we gave them the idea. We basically formatted it for him, allowed him to go out there and make it happen. And you know, uh, no, not even a month and a half later, we have brand new Spanky jerseys for both teams and they're playing against each other. And it was a really great time to see these kids, you know, just get the experience of getting new jerseys. A lot of these kids are leaving high school. And um, you know, shout out to some of the people on Instagram who said, yo, <laughs> these are the hottest jerseys in the city. Just that, thank you for that. But yeah, it was just a special, cool time to be able to see these kids come together and you know the Rising Stars Foundation did a great job of honoring the kids and you know everybody in the Mama Bear clan and everybody who was involved with that to just come out and be a part of the football stuff and that's that's what I love. Absolutely, and we got the chance to sit down with John Kiesman from Elmwood, one of their coaches, uh, as well as the opportunity to sit down with the head coach, Grant McMillan from St. John's, yeah, to sort of talk about, yeah, I mean, what it means to them to, first of all, be coaches in this area, what the Rising Stars Foundation means, and the importance of the game. Uh, it turned into a really lovely piece. Shout out to Mayo and Jeremy, yeah. our, our editors yes, and uh, our shooters for everything they did to help out with this also. I like the number zero, but they're the top one. 
We said, hey, we're trying to do this RSF game where we celebrate the boys who are playing here at the Wood and at St. John's. Uh, let's make it as great of a community event as possible. So the idea of New Jersey's came into play. And so through the Rising Stars Foundation, we did a t-shirt fundraiser, which was pretty successful. And as you see, we were able to, uh, you know, or saw it today, we were able to get some new uniforms for both teams. So we're excited for that. Our, our students, again, the area that St. John's situated, there's, there's not a lot of um, financial resources for extras. Um, and, and so for an organization like that to provide funding to, to help offset the costs of those programs is, is fabulous because we've got um, a lot of really good athletes, some fabulous football players that just don't have opportunities for limited financial resources. Oh, <laughs> it was crazy, it was crazy. Because I, I was like, I was walking in, I had people in and I was like, well, what's happening around here? You feel me? I was, I was, I was like, God damn, yo. But, but them jazz is clean. Them jazz is clean. I respect that. I respect that. Oh man, it was amazing being able to see the look on all the guys' faces and how excited they were. Because I know, I know a couple of the guys wanted for a while new jerseys, and to finally get them, I know they're feeling feeling pumped now for sure. That made me excited, honestly. It made me excited, and I can't wait to rep those jerseys on the field when we play St. John's. It's gonna be fun. It's very, very nice to get new jerseys and feeling good when we're wearing them and feeling the Tiger pride in us.
It was a really, really busy day for you, Keto, this past Thursday, because we went and got, uh, we, we unveiled the new jerseys for, uh, the, for St. John's yeah, and for yeah. Elmwood, uh, and then we talked to all the coaches and stuff like that, and then you booted your way all the way back down yeah. the east side <laughs> yeah. to watch Portage take on yeah, uh, West, uh, West Cape. Yeah. Uh, Portage was able to come out with the victory yes. in that game, and right now they're sitting at 6-0. and yeah. uh, They've been the class of Division Two so far this season with a big offensive line, yes. uh, very, very uh, strong team in terms of depth yeah. uh, linebacking core is also yeah. very very strong yep. um, but yeah can you maybe just describe to me what your observations from Portage so far this season and why they've been able to run the table so well so far you know what honestly that that team's a well-rounded machine you know Don Burrell has done a great job of getting those guys young um, and actually going through a, a rough couple of years with them at the beginning but you can see that now things are starting to gel um, I think he said he has about 15 seniors so you know those guys have been together they're working as leaders they're picking up the younger guys, showing them the ropes of what the, the message and the culture he's been trying to build there. And you know, it's really cool to see a, a team outside of the city coming in the city, whooping <laughs> on teams from the city. And like those country boys, I, I love it out there, you know, and it's like, I, they have a great football community. And um, shout out to the Portage Pitbulls too, who just came back this year. And um, I love when, you know, you see that progression from like even Steinbeck, we talk about Steinbeck mm -hmm. where, you know, they were a young team and now they're starting to do big things. and. It's the same kind of formula with this Portage team. And um, yeah, I, I, all together, what a great game. And you know, here are the highlights. This past Friday, I had the opportunity to check out Grant Park versus Vincent Massey Brandon in Division One Gustafson action, Gustafson Conference action. Uh, very, very competitive Gustafson Conference so far this year in Division One with the Vincent Massey Trojans, the defending champions, currently in first place at four and two. Grant Park fighting for a playoff spot as well with Vincent Massey Brandon, which made their game so critical this past Friday. In terms of Grant Park's roster, they've had some injuries all throughout the season, but they're getting a lot of their key players back, and that was evident in their victory over Vincent Massey Brandon. A uh, number of key players such as senior Luke Rodriguez got involved. Uh, Donovan Dobson who was injured early in the year is back. Very very impressed by him. Stud sophomore back, power back for them. Vincent Massey Brandon has some, some talent on their end as well. Though. Matthew Preston the receiver had the touchdown for them and was great all game long. It was really fun to watch the battle between him and Jake Nitty Chork. That's my guy. Six foot four, 185 pounds, versatile, safety, receiver, cornerback he can do it all for you grade 11 keep an eye on him as well uh, one of those guys that was very impressive in the secondary for Grant Park and what was a very solid game overall between two very competitive teams
Mustangs majors lineman Corey Rouse found out roughly in grade six that he had Tourette's. Instead of seeing it as a negative, he saw it as a positive, uh, using football as well as hockey, both sports to help him to sort of grow as a person and also to help manage his Tourette's. Now he, f he speaks openly and confidently about living with Tourette's as well as why he feels comfortable talking to his teammates about it and just how much football has helped him in that regard. Your typical three, you know, three, four, five, hyperactive kid, nothing about it. And the school that I was at before never thought a thing. And we ended up moving to uh, Southdale, going to Shamrock. And the first day, I guess they called my parents and said, Hey, listen, I think that you should get Corey tested. You might have Tourette's. So There was like nights where I couldn't sleep, I was twitching so much and it just became a huge factor that like there was something more than just being that you know, sugared up hyper kid who was just living on the edge. Like it was, there was something there that we just didn't know. It's something hard to adjust to because you're on a different uh, medication cycle. You're taking one when you wake up, you have to take one on the exact same time every day. So it'd be wake up, medication, four o'clock medication, go to bed, medication. And if you didn't get all three of those doses in a day, I couldn't sleep. My body would be twitching. I would just be endless staring at the ceiling, like not being able to shut my eyes at all. There are days I have where my mind's not in the right place and like I just don't want to be around. Like, I'm just struggling so much. As soon as I walk through the doors here, just mind's clear. Because all I want to do is just come here and see the guys, whether it's a film walkthrough night actual practice, even equipment returns. As soon as you walk through the door, it's, it's a different life. When I came back here in 2016, he had already been here for a year, and then just sort of progressed from there. We weren't super close that year, and then just in the subsequent years, we've ended up getting super close, becoming really close friends. I went to school with him for three years and played football with him for three years and didn't realize until he actually told me one night. I think we were out one night and started telling me he's like oh yeah like I have Tourette's and like telling me a bunch of stuff about it but, like honestly like I had no idea it was like it's like not necessarily that he hides it well but like it's not noticeable to sort of a third party The show on Turfing started in 2016. It allowed me to open up a lot more with like, certain guys, especially like LJ. Who we bonded a lot throughout the years, came closer and closer. Uh, Andrew Nolan, once he came in 2017, it became more of a family again. Like, it was like I had brothers that you know, weren't just at home, they were here for me. Uh, Harold Hangman was another guy who knew about it for years. and He told me whenever I was feeling like telling everyone that it was it was okay too because, like I said, no one's here to judge. Everyone's got their issues with his family, mental, stuff like Tourette's. Like it's, it's okay to be open about it. On a lot of football teams, it's not necessarily the sort of relationship where you're comfortable telling people some of these sorts of things. Like I've played on teams where it's pretty much a business relationship. You go to practice, practice, you change, you go home, you're not staying, you're not hanging out, you're not having life talks with these guys, you're just there to play football and that's it. So I think sort of the cutest show on turf and playing and sort of building this sort of family type relationship has made it so it's not just about football anymore. Guys are actually comfortable bringing whatever sort of personal stuff they want into the team and we're all here for them and we're here to sort of help everyone out. We're not here because it's a business transaction. We're here because we love each other. You're not gonna feel great until you are comfortable with who you are, whether what it is in life. The fact that you can stand up with your chest out and say who you are and this is what you deal with, that's the best feeling in the world. Whether it's mental health, asking for help, saying something or you're having a bad day, just want someone to talk to you. It's about having the strength to actually open up and whatever and help you out. You can't go for things like that.
thank you so very much again for your support, everyone, throughout this process uh, as we continue to grow the sideline show. And we've got some incredibly exciting things yeah. coming soon, Keto. I can't say anything about it right now because everything is still in the works, but we have some very exciting things coming for you uh, as we get towards the end of the season and for next year yes, and going sir. forward. I've got to be honest, guys, we've got a lot of things to talk about here on the, on the extra. Uh, so I'm just going to get right into it. First and foremost, we've got MMFA Championships yep. and MMJFL Championships this Saturday and Sunday. It's yep. Championship Weekend Keto. Break down the Pee Wee contest you're going to be at, first and foremost. Uh, Char uh, not just you, but the crew is going to be yeah, at. The crew. For Charles Wood versus Valor. Yes. I got the opportunity to call three of Charles Wood's home games. Yep. I've seen them in action. Yeah. I've, I've heard Valor is very good yeah. on both sides of the ball. Yep. So Delano Glad, you're a big yeah. fan of his. Yes. Uh, but this should be an offensive showcase, I would think. Yeah, yeah you know what? It's going to be an offensive showcase, no doubt. It's going to come down to, um, I believe, um, the defense that can capitalize on creating turnovers. Because the more the offense is on the field, the, the more chances that offense is going to be able to score. And they're both powerhouses. You know, um, the Valor Patriots have done a great job with creating their athletes and putting them in positions and using those guys with Delano being a quarterback. And Mike Danica, who actually was a, um, um, a select uh, head coach for the 12U, has done a great job with getting his defense, capitalizing on turnovers to get that ball over to the offense. And so, like I say, man, I think this is going to be a really great matchup. We actually had Delano talking at the very beginning of the school um, year talking about in his interview that his goal was to make it to the championship and we also had Elijah <laughs> he did. On, uh, on our show talking about making it to the championship and now they get to battle each other both kids that were part of our program last year and um, you know it's going to be really exciting to see those kids compete. Absolutely all kinds of fun at the Pee Wee level every level of MMFA action really excited for all of that going down if you can get out to it uh, by all means so continue to support amateur football. Next thing on the docket we've got Dakota and Steinbeck Keto yeah. this Friday. Sideline Showdown will be there yeah. for the biggest, yes, mark sir. my words, the <laughs> biggest, yeah. biggest <laughs> regular season game it's in the Winnipeg yes, High School yes. Football League in terms of playoff implications, yes, Keto. Yes, yes. First place is on the line. It yes. doesn't get any bigger it's than this. true. And you know what, Mike? Just to go on your excitement, you're totally right <laughs> right now. I'm Mike, I know you're going to be excited. Game. It is a huge game. And <laughs> Honestly, a game that we would not have been able to call from the very beginning of this year. We would not have. These two teams would have been <laughs> battling for first. Would they rightly, rightfully so? They have both competed this year. Both are, have, have, have shown that they're capable, capable of being top two uh, teams in the Winnipeg High School Football League. And you know what? I'm just really excited to see Dakota, Steinbeck, the kids that we've been seeing from the young age, now juniors and seniors coming together and battling it out. Wow, what a story. Absolutely. Super excited for that. Shout out Mitch Harrison, the rookie head coach for Dakota. Got the boys 6-0, looking for the first yeah. ever 7-0 season at the Division I wow. level for the Dakota Lancers. And on the other side of things, Jamie Peters, yeah. Stephen Fettis, the yeah. boys down there at Steinbeck. Yeah. All kinds of love for those guys. Nothing but respect for everything they've been able to do. Yes, this is their 10th year as a program. And wow. that's this is quite the way Big to start time. your 10th Big year time. for sure. Uh, so all the best of luck to yes, those guys sir. as well. Moving on to our next piece of information on the docket, the social. Yes. The, uh, coming up here soon yeah. keto break it down for me okay so for our social it's coming up this week this saturday our halloween social we've been talking about it really excited um we're expecting a lot of people there uh our grand prizes is a trip to las vegas for two as well as um we have big screen tvs guest appearances from andrew harris um you know other guest appearances from my boy brody jackson uh country you know doing his thing and um you know at the end of the day it's gonna be a great time to be able to get together with the parents it's gonna be an adult only um uh um social and um yeah it's gonna be a great time to get with the parents raise some funds for the program and help get helmets help get equipment and just get to know everybody and you know Dress to a price. We have a door prize for the best Halloween costume. So uh, we're really excited for that, especially. And uh, we'll see you there. If you if you need any, if you want any information on buying any tickets, go to our Facebook page and uh, you can find it there. Most definitely. Once again, thank you so very much, Stephen, for your support. <laughs> Everybody's getting Practice in. Come is on. over. So everybody's coming through here. <laughs> Get in. Yeah. It's a group thing, y'all up in okay, here. It's okay. a group thing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Woo! Yeah. Stop pushing. All right. Come on, these guys over here. That's all we got for today. Thank you for your support. Thank you, guys. Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. You can check us out there. Yes, Last words from Keto. All right, man. So, hey, guys, hey, we're going to do a sideline showdown shout out, all right, guys? So, hey, 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 hey. 
Hey, hey, we're going to do a sideline showdown shout out. You guys are going to be on TV. So <laughs> let them know. Let them know. Hey, we're going to say, hey, we're the Selects fam, and you're watching the sideline showdown, all right? It's good. Y'all got it? Yeah. All right, on three. All right, on three. One, two, three. What? <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> All right, that's good enough. <laughs> that was horrible, by the way. That was really horrible. <laughs>